yellow ribbon to build. As the soldiers inexplicably repel Down from the arena rafters If not so insane We'll be grounds for screaming You are listening to Unscripted Moments, a podcast about propaganda. Welcome to the sixth episode of the miniseries on a catastrophic break with Consensus Reality, the record featuring Chris Hanna and friends. On this episode, Chris and I discuss the Patreon version of Dear Coach's Corner, originally from Propagandy's supporting cast LP. After that, we'll hear more from guitarist and producer Murray Pulver, who was instrumental in the creation of this alternate version. Remember, there are three ways to enjoy this series. First, you can listen to each song individually with Chris and the guests. You can listen to a one-hour version with just me and Chris with no guests. And you can listen to the full four-and-a-half-hour jumbo edition that includes all of Chris's commentary and all guest interviews in the order of the record. Please enjoy. Chris, let's go back to the next track on the record, which is Dear Coach's Corner. Clean. Dear coaches, quarter, I'm riding in order for someone to explain to minus the distinction between these mandatory pregame group rights of submission. Rallies at Nuremberg Specifically the function The ritual serves in conjunction With what everybody knows Is in the end the kids game I'm just appealing To your sense of fear when I say she's puzzled by so we're going to hear more from Murray and Paul in a little bit that we heard earlier uh, with regards to speculative fiction but I'm wondering if you can talk to me about what stands out to you about the reimagining of Dear Coach's Corner what stands out to you for, that you can remember um, I guess the strongest memory and maybe the most rep- representative memory of, of the whole project was the first time I went over to Murray's house to, um, even investigate whether this idea was, was feasible or not. Um, like I, I'd run into him at one of my son's soccer games. I think his nephew or a friend's nephew was on my son's team and I, and I had just been asking him about what he was doing um, for work. And, and uh, he told me about production. I was asking him, well, what does production entail? And I made a joke about him helping me record some songs. And he was like, yeah, man, I'd be up for that if you have something, and which I was surprised by. And um, then I went home and started thinking, well, maybe this isn't as big of a joke of an idea as I think it is, which is, uh, a, a real strength of Murray's, which is to instill confidence and calm and a, and a sense of possibility in people like me that uh, grapple with, uh, with self-doubt. Mm. Um, but it, so, yeah, anyways, I, I went to his house to talk about it and he was like, well, man, let's, let's hear what you got. And he pulled out this guitar and I was like, Oh, okay. <laughs> you know, he had this guitar, I think it's called a Dobro. It has like a steel top thing on it. Okay. And uh, he wanted me to play uh, on a different guitar, this acoustic version of Dear Coach's Corner, which, uh, you know, I was mortified to even attempt. But, <laughs> but again, Murray is very disarming and has, and he also has a really good sense of humor, which kind of puts people at ease. Uh, so I was, I was up for giving it a shot. And so I started and Murray just joined in and like immediately 
immediately I was just bowled over at how legit it sounded despite my vocals and my guitar playing I was like fuck this is it this is all it has to be like yeah. all you need all you need is Murray Pulver on this dobro or whatever it's called to uh pull a legit sounding song out of thin air and uh it was a cool moment for me because it kind of unveiled the essence of the song itself you know and you know it was like this weird affirmation that it was an actual song and not just a bunch of well executed clattering and shrieking like right. you know like i knew it was a legit song in some ways but the way murray played it it was a, a bit of an epiphany for me so that was really cool you know something that stands out to me about the way you talk about murray and the session players that were on speculative fiction and dear coach's corner is that i feel like with propaganda it you know you've always described it as you know very laborious process to to make the music that you all do in the band but now you're seeming to work with these people like you know, uh, Dave Landreth and Murray Pulver, who are playing these songs, but it's so much of a different, like more of a natural style. Like they understand music on such a level that it just comes out of them almost effortlessly. And it helps you re-envision your own work. Does that make sense? Yeah, totally. Like things are laborious with propaganda. Like it's completely different, but I, I have to emphasize, I still love that. Like I love the thing I like about being in propaganda like primarily is being in the practice space with those guys and, and, and laboring over stuff to the point where we're going insane. Um, so like, I'm not like, just, just to be clear, I'm not disparaging that process. It's just, it was so different and uh, to, to see how these guys do it. And I think somewhere between those two processes is another, you know, can is another level you can combine the kind of forensic mind bending work process in propaganda with this with this completely loose uh and open vibe of these established studio musicians and make something even better mm. do you do you remember like watching the band play this in the studio while it was being tracked um yeah yeah i do what well, like what what stands out to you like what do you remember whenever you kind of like close your eyes and remember it well i like i guess again like murray just scribbling down these little charts for the players um moments before before paul pressed record and these yeah. guys just looking at the notes and going okay and and then this he presses record and they start playing and it's like, what the fuck it's happening. Like that's, that's all it takes. And, you know, particularly like I have this vision of looking through the studio glass and seeing like Dave Landreth is just, he's just sitting, he's just sitting down on like a, a cab or something like in the corner um, playing, like not that he wasn't paying attention. Like he didn't need to like, he wasn't hunched over his base, like worried about what was coming up next. He's just in the moment uh, playing with a facility that is not familiar, I think, to anybody in our band. Mm. And uh, it was just really impressive to me. Amazing. You know, the vocals, uh, the melody, you, you've adjusted the melodies. You left out some lyrics at the end. And I'm wondering if you have any reflections on the vocal performance that you kind of went through with the reimagined melody and also the omission of some vocals. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's not bad. Like uh, uh, this vocally, I think, did I have more trouble with this one? I think I had more trouble with this one because it was a little more uh, naked. Mm. a little less to hide behind maybe it was a touch less or a touch more out of my wheelhouse um but i think i pulled it off good enough like for who i am and um i actually think at the end of this song we did we make a mistake in the studio with the structure i can't remember if it was 
if this was born out of a, a mistake that we missed a part, but at some part, um, like the, the lyrics you're talking about that are missing, uh, I think it was because we made a mistake in the structure. We were like, oh, how do we fix this? And I was like, well, wait a minute. Let's, I think actually the, the idea of the song is actually over there. Mm. Like in the, in the song on the propaganda record, um, maybe those didn't need to be there. So I was like, okay, well, let's just, let's end it there. And, and I thought that was, I, I really enjoyed that. Like I was like kind of excited by that. Oh, wow. We're changing this and it actually we're editing it and it works better. Um, which is, I mean, that's subjective obviously, but I thought it was cool. I love it. Well, we're going to hear from Murray. Murray's got more comments on Deer Coach's Corner. So we're going to throw to Murray Pulver, who played guitar on this track. So uh, let's hear the side of the story from Murray. We'll be back in a bit. Do you uh do you want to chat about Coach's Corner for a little bit? Sure. Yeah, sure. Tell um, me, yeah, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. You tell me it. your thoughts on the original Coach's Corner from supporting cast. Well, uh, I feel like this was it's so uh, you know, being Canadian and with a title like that, uh um, I don't know if you've ever seen an episode of Coach's Corner. I'm Absolutely. You yeah. Have. Yeah. I uh I lived in Saskatoon. Uh, for a couple years. Um, and so I never oh, knew really? about Don Cherry or Ron McLean until I was until 2007, I think was when they kind of wow. came onto my radar. Um, yeah. But yeah, I definitely have uh, taken in the <laughs> the spectacle of the, the Don Cherry jacket yeah. section. Yeah. <laughs> so the title is is such a man, it's such a cool title. And Chris being such a hockey fan, you know, he's just, uh, it, it just it really, you know, clearly was like, oh, I better listen to this song. This is going to be pretty cool. And, and, uh, and lyrically, like it's, um, it could mean uh, to me a few different things. And I, I've seen chats where people are like, you know, coming up with their own versions of what it's all about. But I just thought the song was, was fantastic. And again, I listened to the original a bunch of times. So I was like, how the hell am I going to? do this like i really don't know where to take this and what he's talking about you know mm -hmm. like how are we going to make this so he can sit and play this at a comfortable volume and, and you know because i was picturing chris at some open mic night playing these songs and uh and then again i hate to say it but i i i really not i don't hate to say it I, i'm happy to say that jen's version really made me um pick it apart a little bit and, mm -hmm. and get, it, get into the lyric a little more. And uh, maybe because I, I play with so many or produce so many singer songwriters. Um, it was, it was just an easier way for me to take it in and then um, sort of, you know, throw some ideas at, at Chris. He just came over and uh, I I'd reworked some chords and thought of a little riff and stuff on the Dobro actually he goes, Oh, I like the sound of that, but it's all I had at home right then mm -hmm. to play. And he was like, yeah, that's what it should be. And I'm like, really? This is too easy, man. Like, um, but the original song is just so fantastic and, uh, and incredible performances by that band, you know? Yeah. You know what I'm what I'm feel, what I'm feeling about um whenever you say something like this is too easy like your musical instincts are you know different than his your experiences are so different than his so what comes yeah. totally second nature and quote unquote obvious to you would be mm. something that may be completely brand new to him so For like sure. while it, while it feels easy to you I'd say it's your years and years of experience in that yeah. and his years of experience in something totally different that makes you feel that it's easy, but him right. feel that it's like, whoa, this is amazing. You that's know? exact, and that's a very good observation. And and like, because I would play certain voicings on the guitar, he's just like, what? How the hell do you do that? Like, what's yeah. what is that? And then we <laughs> we'd get into guitar nerddom, you know, and like, yeah, I could never play what he does. Like, it's like, so actually, like, you know, he he just uh, was super excited about um, playing something differently. I like, I don't know if he's ever tried to play these like they are, but. 
Yeah. Well, and I guarantee you, he got to learn new stuff with you, which is awesome. For sure. Yeah. I, yeah. I love that. It was a sharing. Um, so you, you mentioned that you kind of used Jen's process, Jen's video sort of as like a picking apart starting point. Um, mm -hmm. Any other memories that stand out to you about kind of really when you like honed in on like the, the, the new version? Like I said, it's a long time ago, but I, I don't really, I, I, nothing stands out to me as being like, oh, I've got to do this. I, I think once I had the initial um, like kind of verse and, and, you know, thought uh, and, the, and the form together I, I kind of ran uh I ran that by Chris just kind of almost played him the first verse I'm like what do you think of this and he's if he was excited about that then I'd run with the rest sure and and and, and say okay well I can do this then and I you know because to be honest I when this started I was like holy shit I'm out of my out of my realm or league here I really don't know how the hell I'm going to do this and you know a bit of nervousness too because you know even though like we're a similar age and we're from the same small town and friends, like they've become something that um, I really, it's a different world from what my world is. And so I was kind of nervous in approaching like, well, what about this idea? And, you know, thinking I'm going to go cowering home to, I hate this shit, you know, like yeah. this is <laughs> when I said this, this is what I meant. Not, um, but you know, Chris is such a, a great dude and, and so, so easygoing that uh, it, it was actually made it so easy. It, again, I use that word, but it, it's, it made it super fun too. Like it was sure, just yeah. something that I, I had no uh, uh, preconceived notion going into it. And, and just, it was musical freedom, which is just like, that's how music should be. That's how, you know, good music happens. I love it. Do you have any like stories or memories that stand out from being in the studio doing your parts on this one or, um, you know, thoughts on the other guys as well? Yeah. Well, like I said, all this happened so quickly. Yeah. Um, I, I was like, okay, I'm going to play this on Dobro. And, and I just grabbed a, some shitty Dobro and, and, and played the riff and uh, then doubled it on acoustic and again, like Chris is like just a cheering section. He's just in the sidelines, you know, like, like, yeah, that's it. Do that again. Or, or <laughs> now, now what are you going to do? He would know, ask me, he's like, what are we going to, now what do you do with this? And I was like, well, what about uh, this electric part or whatever? It, is, it was honestly, um, uh, Ryan and Dave really, uh, they um, set a really great, um, you know, canvas to sort of work shit on and, mm -hmm. and 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 um i think i i think i put just like maybe two or three guitars on it and then I said chris is this cool for you to sing on is that enough sort of inspiration and uh he took it home and then sent me wicked vocals i sang backgrounds and added a few more little you know embellished kind of things and uh that one was done actually the first that's the first one we did like that was completely done so it sounds like to me like this was just pure joy and fun and really not that stressful. Like it feels like it was very organic and that everybody was like, you know, very dialed in on this. Yeah. But like it wasn't like a massive struggle or anything. No. And I feel like because I work with a lot of artists where there's label, there's uh, management, there's momagers, dadagers, you know, there's all these. Um, people involved where there's that adds this pressure and this is just Chris and a wide open Chris you know and just being let's just have a blast doing this and uh I don't know where it's gonna go and um I I, I I'm so far loving everything and he was just uh um I just think it was a, a like a rebirth for him of these songs you know and, mm -hmm. and just excited excited to see where that could go and and excited also to see that it, it can happen that like these songs can be um rethought and and um reimagined the song had it, it cuts off a little bit of the original version at the end right like right. so it's a little it's a little shorter lyrically was that done just solely for oh, yeah a a different ending impact or for time purposes like do you remember any of the conversation about why the song is shorter lyrically that's true that's right i think chris just said 
yeah, let's just cut this shit off. Like, like we're done with it. <laughs> because I think things is too long, especially, you know, because it's, uh, you know, tempo wise, it's slower and, and all that yeah. stuff. Um, and I, I may have said too, like, do we have to do this part? <laughs> you know, and not fully realizing, you know, maybe what part did we cut out too? Like, I don't even know. Like, yeah, um, I can't remember it, off the top of my head where it cuts off, but it's only like a line or two at the end. I mean, it's not that oh, much. Oh, yeah. Short, not that much. Yeah. I think he just didn't want to say it. Um, um, I'm pretty sure it was just like, yeah, I don't need to say that shit right now. Okay, cool. <laughs> I like you know, that. Which, which, which might have been just a, a head space decision or, um, or uh, something that, you know, that's the thing too, when you write music and write lyrics, and then you're in a different point in your life, you might be like, well, that was unnecessary or, hmm. you know, why the hell did I say that? Or. I like that. It's like a second, on... it's a second chance. Yeah, to, totally. Yeah. And cause I've worked like, you know, uh, with the songwriters who've had huge success with songs and, you know, but it, it just represents a different time and space in their life where they had that to say, and then they may have grown and, and thought differently of it. And so they hate, sometimes hate singing the song that's made them huge, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and I'm going to check it out, which, which lines were omitted. Cause I, I forget, but yeah, you just, I remember Chris saying, ah, I don't need to sing that now. I'm going to ask him. I'm going to ask yeah. him about it. <laughs> yeah. And he may go, what? We left that out. Oh, <laughs> Murray, that asshole. <laughs> oh my God. Um, okay, so you are, are on two of the nine songs for for this a catastrophic break with consensus reality record. Uh, there are many other people to play on it, many other styles of music, many different songs of artists that he covered. So the other ones are all covers, the years are um propaganda originals. Have you yeah. had a chance to listen to the rest of the record at all? And I'm wondering if you have any thoughts on the the whole product. Uh, well, I very quickly because honestly um i think i chris only let me know a little bit ago that it was actually, oh okay oh uh, and and so i just you know i've been crazy busy but i uh i listened to a couple things uh and like i love i went instantly i went to wasted years because uh i'm you know every guitar player like our age learned the riffs and stuff mm -hmm. and, and uh so it's just like Oh, it's so cool. And Chris singing those, it just gives it a whole different vibe. And and uh, so actually, I think Paul played on that. Paul and played bass. Darren Acorn as well. Oh, okay. Darren Acorn. Yeah. Uh, who I don't know. And he's a Winnipeg guy. Yeah. Like Winnipeg's weird because we have, for a small city, we have a lot of different scenes. Yeah. And, and so, you know, there's the punk scene. There's, there's this art rock scene. There's this like folk singer songwriter scene. Uh, like it's just bizarre for a town this size we have a lot of circles and i i know some of them but not mm -hmm. all of them so that world like i've, I've heard of darren acorn but never met him and yeah I, i'd pass him on the street and not know who it was but dude and, and now you're on a record with him yeah exactly yeah that's the funny thing yeah amazing well murray do you have any other um you know thoughts on this process or these tunes or anything else that may ring out to you or stand out to you or just like a takeaway yeah. Um, the thought on like what this all means to you. Yeah. Well, to be honest, it's just a, a, a takeaway from it is I was just thankful to be uh, a, you know, just for that run in with Chris where we could sort of chat, you know, just, and we just caught up basically. And, and, and I was thankful that he was like, you know, trusting uh, in me to, uh, to rework some of these, you know, iconic propaganda songs that were just like, you know, I know how much that music means to prop fans. And so for me to take on that responsibility was kind of like, oh my God, like my brother, my uh, ex-brother <laughs> uh, was is one of the best, like huge, biggest prop fans. And so, um, you know, I just realized through him what this band means to so many people. And, you know, uh, and, and so I was just, I, I felt this pressure, but also was honored that Chris thought, we might be a good pairing, you know, to do this. And I was just, uh, and I'm thankful how they turned out too. Like they really uh, have a life of their own and they could stand alone as something else, a different project even, you mm -hmm. know, like, so that's exciting too. And now 
when he sings the songs live, he even alludes to these new versions with, you know, some, some vocal, some vocal yeah. change up. So they, they live on, even though these versions aren't the performed versions, like they, like for people that are in the know, they yeah. are like, ah, there's that part. Yes. <laughs> that is wild. That's so cool to me. It's an exclusive little club. Well, yeah. Mary Pulver, um, Thank you so much for for joining me to to chat about these tunes. I hope that people will uh, you know check out some of your other work. And but I'm just really delighted that you took some time yeah. to hang out and talk about these uh, catastrophic break with consensus reality tunes. Thank you so much for being here. Yeah, happy to do it, Greg. Thanks for having me. The final I ain't played From pedal to To the cat no Every fine memory of childhood that I know Somehow connected To the culture of This game I just can't live Let it go. All right. Thank you so much to Murray Pulver for chatting about Dear Coach's Corner with me.